Thanks for joining me. My name is Magda, and I've been working remotely for about eight years now. And with all this crazy COVID-19 stuff happening, I thought it would be good, like a lot of people actually, <laughs> to talk about working remotely, um, but from a very different perspective. So joining me today is one of my colleagues, Nishmita. Hi, Nishmita. Hi, everyone. It's great to be here. Thanks for having me, Magda. So Nishmita is based in Bangalore in India, and I've been working with her for a year and a half, and we've only met once. Mm -hmm. Multiple Which, times virtually, though. <laughs> multiple times virtually, yeah. So that's why I thought, um, you know, it would be kind of fun and interesting to just chat about kind of how you and I work together. Um, but you know, not focusing on kind of logistical things because I feel like there's a lot of resources out there and we can link to a few of them after this um, conversation. There's a bunch of resources around what tools to use to work remotely. I mean, we're right now broadcasting on YouTube and we're using Zoom to do that, which is a tool that we use on a regular basis. So I kind of don't want to talk about that because we're not necessarily experts, like we have our preferences and we can talk about them. Um, what I want to talk about is actually the kind of experiences um, mm -hmm. that we go through on a regular basis by working remotely and um, kind of how, maybe how we deal with them, uh, hopefully effectively. But I just wanna talk about the challenges because I know that I have them and my energy, you know, having worked remotely for eight years now, and by the way, it's different companies. So some of this was where I'd be working remotely, um, let's say for a month, and then I'd be in the office for a few weeks. Um, other ones were, I'd be working at home for four days and then going flying into an office for a couple of days. So like with Kotaria, the current company where we are colleagues, I work completely remotely. I mean, I've literally met Nishmita, I think for four days total. Yes. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and somehow, you know, our company is growing and we have a really good rapport, I think. Yes. <laughs> So this is possible. So I just wanted to yeah, talk about that for people who are working remotely, maybe for the first time in their life. And it's a bit weird. So Nishmita, um, I have a lot of things to say because you've met me, you know, that's how it goes. Is there any kind of introduction you want to give on your part or do you want me to jump into questions? How do you want to play it? I think I do have a few thoughts I want to share. Okay. Um, so before Kochara, the job I was doing was extremely different and it was not remote at all. <laughs> it was as local as it can get and not supportive of technology. So coming to Kochara was extremely different for me. It was like a complete sw like 180 switch. Um, but it's been interesting. Um, it's been challenging, of course, especially, um, I mean, I have Magda who's, who's brilliant with the tools <laughs> and things. So it's like, you know, on that end, nice. we're good. <laughs> no, it's true. And she's also very supportive with um, other things that we talk about, like about challenges, but something that I guess the world doesn't prepare you for is the life skills required in a way to work from home and it has its own challenges um it really does <laughs> so yeah life I mean, skills. so which, which life skills have you learned <laughs> by force <laughs> discipline i mean creating discipline for yourself <laughs> biggest one i think um yeah putting in root, a routine and um just I think discipline is not just about the way you uh, function with your schedule, but also how you manage your emotions, which honestly somehow does become harder with working from home. But I'm not going to speak too much about it because I think it will come up through this um, yeah. conversation <laughs> that we have. <laughs> so that's just how much I wanted to say. <laughs> yeah, emotions are a big topic and actually, um you know, this, that was kind of the reason why I want to have a conversation, to be honest, um, the emotions that we go through, because like, and, and look, maybe I might be using energy and emotions mm -hmm. uh, interchangeably a little bit. I maybe shouldn't, but I probably will. Um, 
you know, and I'd love to hear kind of how what, what you experience, but there's this thing that we, okay, so Kocharia, I should, yeah, Kocharia, the company where we both work, um, it's a coaching company. So we do coaching as in um, with teams, with individuals, life, executive, whatever. And we train coaches to do that, um, coaches to credentials. So coaching is kind of, you know, this thread that we have throughout everything we do in the business as well. And um, I was just doing something completely unrelated yesterday and thought of doing this webinar because there's this concept that we teach in our classes from the very beginning and that's set and it's sensations, emotions, and thoughts. And um, the context in which we teach this topic is in kind of in the beginning of a coaching conversation is this check-in process with your coachee, with your client, and also a checkout process at the end of the conversation. And the whole point is um, to figure out, you know, where, where are we starting from and where are we ending to understand if there was a shift in the client and what was that shift? Because coaching is about, yeah, overcoming blocks and, and shifting behaviors or shifting how you feel. And um, I was feeling a bit down and um, part of it is, you know, whether part of it is, travel getting canceled and fun with mm -hmm. COVID. And um, part of it is, you know, um, sometimes not feeling, I shouldn't say supported because I feel supported with people like yourself, but just feeling a little down by not being in the office, but not being able to kind of walk up to the, the kitchenette and, you know, I don't know, have a piece of cake. I usually have cake around. Um, so I started thinking to myself, like how, you know, how do I how do I deal with this? Because I really I, I do deal with this because I go through these ups and downs on a regular basis. It's not just a random thing that happened yesterday before a flight got, got canceled because a flight got canceled. And so I thought of this concept of um of set sensations, emotions, and thoughts. And um, you know, sensations are what what is your body that truly feeling? Like, do I have a headache? Um, am I achy because I was working out, or am I achy because I'm sitting too long? But Point is, it's like, it's literally the sensations you are feeling. Um, and emotions are, what emotions are you feeling? What are you experiencing? And, you know, I was experiencing sadness and um, disappointment um, and frustration and things like that. And, you know, the last thing is what, what are you thinking? What are your thoughts? And I started thinking, just, I started overthinking. Like I tend to overanalyze things already. And um, I first was very, very negative thoughts. And then because I started thinking of this concept, it kind of incepted me to think more rationally and realize I go through these ups and downs all the time. I just need to maybe have a chat to Nishmita. And I think I will actually feel better if we talk through the sorts of challenges we face by working remotely. And what emotional toll it can have on you and talk about how we cope. So it's kind of a circular argument. I know that, but that's why I reached out to you to have this chat. So set, mm -hmm. um, <laughs> it works in coaching. It works in self-coaching um, and it helps me kind of deal with this stuff. <laughs> what about you? I think, yeah, that's very true. I mean, um, I do it a little bit. I think I follow the same steps, but I do it a little bit uh, differently in the sense that it just happens a little organically with me. Like some days, I think one of the things about going to an office is that you don't have a choice. You just have to do it. You just have to wake up. You can't just roll out of bed and open your laptop. <laughs> you have to wake up. You have to have a bath, you know, dress up and then go. And in some places, be on time and others not not but whatever but that's not how it works here and when you know that your job sometimes at least for me I need to know that my job is on the line you know <laughs> for me to behave <laughs> so um it's it's very hard sometimes to get out of bed and and previously uh, when when I wasn't doing too well I would I would bully myself in my head to do that but now it's not that way anymore, which is a good thing. And now I kind of 
coax myself out of it, you know, and I'm nicer <laughs> to myself. And then, um, yeah, some days when my energy is really low, I just pull out my journal and I start writing. And um, that kind of gets out all of the all of the gunk. I don't even know what it is, but it's just out there. And then that gives me a chance to sort of look at it and be like, huh, okay, this is what I'm going through, fine. And then I take a nice bath, like maybe put on some nice music. And then I, I slowly get to work. And um, interestingly, on the days that I'm not motiv- like I'm not feeling naturally motivated and I'm just going at it, even though my pace is slow, I, when I'm really, really trying to do, like, you know, go at it, I land up getting the most work done, which is one of the most comforting things, I think. So, yeah, I think the way I deal with it, to answer your question, is to just do it and try to be as kind to myself through the process as possible. Mm. Be kind to yourself. I really like that. Because... Um, what occurs to me is, well, you and I are in very different time zones. Mm -hmm. Uh, I'm in Chicago right now. It's 1130 AM for me and you're in Bangalore and it's 11, 10, 10 10 PM. Okay. And I suck at time zones. Um, But we kind of have the luxury of because we're distributed geographically as well. um, It doesn't actually make sense for us to have work hours. So both of us kind of make our own hours, which is, both a blessing and a curse, frankly, because like you just said, you have to force yourself, coax yourself, whatever, to do things sometimes because there isn't an expectation that at 9 a.m. you're ready to go. Um, but then you can kind of schedule your day to get life in when you need to get life in. Um, so you and I have that benefit, but um, you know, especially right now with all this coronavirus drama, a lot of what's happening is people who do have those restrictions to be at the office at 9 a.m. Um, or whatever, uh, just now they are doing it remotely. So I bet that they are struggling with a bunch of different things that maybe you and I can't even relate to um, because they still have the expectation of all that structure. Um, yeah. But I really like what you said, be kind to yourself as kind of the one thing that any of us can do to ourselves regardless, but in the context of working remotely, it doesn't matter if you're making your own hours or if you have still that structure and you're expected to maybe be on a Zoom call for the entire day so someone's monitoring you. I don't know, that would suck, but maybe that's what your job is, that's fine. Um, but being kind to yourself feels like, just feels like really good advice, Nishvita. Thanks. Some advice I need to keep reminding myself to take as well. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And that's why it's good to have these conversations for, for me. Um, me because too. sometimes you have to articulate something, I feel like, in order for you to remember that that makes sense. And that's what I should be doing too. Yep. <laughs> so I have a question, if I mean. Uh oh, of course. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So um, one fun thing, I mean, I wouldn't say fun, but like one thing that would have been easier I guess for me is when I have a change of context from home to office is that if Mm -hmm. something shitty happened at home I don't have a choice a lot of times like sometimes it does trickle in and you have a bad mood but you can still do a better job at setting it aside and working and distracting yourself right and getting things done Mm. and the same goes from taking your office back home like there is a clearer chance of making that work-life distinction whereas while um while you're working from home sometimes a lot of times actually like these things tend to the environment tends to interlap so with Mm. my laptop and me I'm in one universe but there's this whole other thing happening around me because it's my home and Mm. a lot of times if there's something going on it's very hard for me to detach myself and say, hey, I'm not going to bother about that right now. I I have to work and not feel like a shitty human being for doing that. So how do you deal with that? (laughs) (laughs) Um, I 
I don't do, do it very well, to be honest, sometimes because, okay, in theory, the way that I, that has worked for me um, is having defined spaces. Um, so I have an office. Um, again, I have the luxury of having the space to have an office. So that's um, not necessarily a place I go to hang out, uh, but it's a, a serious spot um, where I have a desk and I have um, some blackboard uh, wallpaper where I can write stuff and doodle and stick uh, post-its and all that fun stuff. Um, it has a couch in there too, so that I can be comfortable. So in theory, um, that's kind of what works, but in practice, and I think by the way, that is definitely a place to start. Like even if it's whatever the corner of your house, apartment, whatever you can carve out, I think you should um, for remote work. You need, I, I think that's a physical space is necessary because it'll just change how you're thinking. Like you do need to escape your work sometimes and you need to escape life. Um, and you know, if you have the luxury of going to cafes, for example, I think that could also be an office. Um, I don't know, it, whatever works for you. But that's all in theory, because in practice, um, like right now I'm in my kitchen, uh, before I was in the living room. And what I'm realizing right now, actually, that there was a shift for me, because in previous jobs, I was much more focused on my office. I actually have a standing desk because I've got a back issue that causes me a lot of pain. And one of the ways to deal with it for me is to change positions. So um, sometimes I'm actually lying down. You're not supposed to lie down with your laptop, but I do because for me, it's if I'm sitting too long or standing too long or anything too long is when my back pain starts. So I have a standing desk so that I can adjust how I work. And I have that couch in there actually, because then I'm in my office. And as I was talking, I realized that I had that setup for previous jobs um, where I was more stressed and I was more concerned and I had to have that bigger separation between my work life and my life life. But I've realized that, um, especially for the past like year and a half working with you and with Coach Aria, um, I haven't needed that as much. So it's not that it didn't work or it's failing, but I don't need that much physical space. It's okay for me to have my life and my work overlap a lot. Um, and because we're so geographically distributed, I mean, we're, we're not a large company, but we're a global company. And I get the same kind of requests and you know emails from people middle of the night as I do at lunch, as I do in the evening when I'm having a glass of wine. Like that's just how life is. So sorry, I talk a lot. Um, but it's, it's a really pleasant thing. I just realized that I haven't had the need to be stuck in my office. Um, and I was talking to a prospect who's hopefully joining one of our uh, coach training programs yesterday. Um, and she's based on the West coast in the U S and, uh, before we got into the, you know, what do we do as a company, blah, blah. She said to me, um, Magda, I feel like I know you and I know your living room and your kitchen and your dog <laughs> because mm -hmm. I've seen you on webinars uh, at Kocharia. So let me maybe start with giving you a bit more of my life background because I feel like you're part of the family already. And I thought, oh my God, that's so cool. Um, <laughs> it made me so happy that uh, people feel that kind of connection um, well, A, feel a kind of connection with Kocharia, which is really important to me and feel the connection with me personally, because that's really important to me and feel that connection, despite the fact that I've never met this person in my life. Um, this, how we're talking right now, isn't even how we've interacted. She's seen me talk, but she hasn't even talked back. And that just blew my mind that, um, she felt like we were friends and it was great. I'm like, yes, of course we're friends. I've never <laughs> met you, but I love you. <laughs> and she's a dog. Um, that's a rescue, which is great. Anyway, I, I'm going in circles. It seems like maybe a weird cutoff in the video now, but that's because we actually have some technical difficulties and my lovely uh, conversational partner Nishmita went completely silent. So we will try another time, but that's just one of the challenges of working remotely. and. Um, Right now, what could happen is I get really, really frustrated 
or I can just deal with it. So because we are on an actual live video, um, it would be a bit of a drama uh, for me to switch to different channels and reconnect. But in real life, that's okay. What I would do is just hang up and restart and see if it works. Or I would just go into WhatsApp and have a conversation there. Or Google Meet and have a conversation there. What's really cool about technology um, is that there's not just one option to connect. And I think that's pretty awesome. Um, the technology is no longer an excuse for us to not work uh, remotely effectively. It's the emotional baggage that we need to deal with, I think. So um, we'll revisit this again when we have better audio. And um, until then, I think a good thing to do is to you know, practice self-care, be kind to yourself. Like Nishmita said, um, journaling is a really good idea too and using the thing that we learned from coaching set uh, sensations emotions and thoughts just to kind of check in with yourself i think if you do those three things you will deal with remote working much better than others um if you enjoyed this conversation in any way shape or form please click subscribe Bleh. please click subscribe because we will solve our technical difficulties and we will have these sorts of conversations more in the future. And there'll be actual conversations, not just me talking at the camera. So goodbye for now.